the, in the overall reaction, but does not make an appearance in the rate law. We can use reaction mechanisms to uh, figure out how products are formed, and it could be multiple steps, right? Um, it may not just be one, but we're going to look at some relatively simple ones. Okay. So here's an important term, elementary reactions. When you see this term, it should signify to you that you can get the rate law from that reaction mechanism. Okay, I'll show you what that means. So um, we're also thinking about how many reactants are involved in a reaction? We've got these three terms, unimolecular, bimolecular, termolecular. They mean what you might think. A unimolecular reaction involves a reactant with one molecule, so like a decomposition reaction. Uh, bimolecular, we have to have two molecules colliding. Termolecular, we have to have three molecules colliding. Those are very rare because statistically speaking, it's really hard to make three molecules collide at the same time. Um, so when we have a reaction that occurs in multiple steps, we see an intermediate, we see a transition state, okay? Um, some multi-step mechanisms will include intermediates, these are species that appear uh, in an elementary step, but are not reactant or product. Okay, they show up and then they go, they react, they're formed and then they go away. Um, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. They do not show up in the overall balanced equation. Okay. So this is why we have to use fast spectroscopy to figure out that they're there. In this potential energy diagram, we have our reactants, we have our products, endothermic reaction. Okay. We climb up one hill to get to a transition state and uh, from there we go to an intermediate. That intermediate is a short-lived chemical species. From that intermediate it's possible to go to another transition state and then on to the products. Okay. Again, transition state, activated complex, those are the same terms. I think I need to be careful because on uh, the last set of notes I said intermediate was the same term. It's not the same term. Uh, I said intermediate state. Um, An intermediate res uh, refers to a specific thing that happens, uh, that is formed, and you could actually uh, isolate it if only for a short period of time. But they're more stable than a transition state. So an intermediate, I guess another way to think about this, an intermediate is going to occur in a valley. And a transition state is going to occur on the top of a hill. I think I like that, that description. Okay, so here we have an overall reaction of A plus 2B forming BAB, all right? Our reactants in this case are A plus 2B, and our product is going to be BAB. All right, I'm taking that from the overall reaction. Now, if you look at the mechanism, that's those two steps that are involved um, that are summed up to make the overall. We have A plus B forming AB, and we have AB plus B forming BAB. And you'll notice that if we add up these chemical equations like we add up mathematical equations, A and B are gonna cancel because it shows up on the product of the first reaction and on the reactant side of the second reaction. which means AB is an intermediate.
And so we can add AB to our diagram in the valley where the intermediate form is formed. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I'm gonna, uh, okay, one thing here, I mentioned that from knowing that a reaction is an elementary reaction, we can get the rate law. And what that means is we can use the stoichiometry to write the rate law. Now, last time we were talking about writing the rate law and we needed to know experiments and looking at um, how we change the concentration, how does that affect the rate, and things like that. We have to still do that if we don't know that a reaction is an elementary reaction. However, if it is an elementary reaction, we can simply use the stoichiometry to determine the rate law. So for our step one reaction, this is an elementary reaction. We're just stating that that's the case. So that the rate is going to be equal to the rate constant times H2 times ICL. Each, um, or, each uh, order is one with respect to each reactant because the, uh, the stoichiometric coefficient is one. If there was a two there, it would be order with uh, two, the order would be two with respect to whatever reactant. Okay. So those stoichiometric coefficients um, would be a factor here. They are a factor. So this is one, this is one, and both of those are from the stoichiometry. For these two uh, reactions, do, is there an inter intermediate and what is it? HI. HI, yep. So HI is formed as a product in one side, used up as a reactant in the other, so it has to be an intermediate. Make sense? Yes? I thought an intermediate was like a state. An intermediate is something that is formed and lasts for, I misspoke on the, that last section. An intermediate is something that is formed and lasts for some amount of time. It may be short still, but it does last for some amount of time. Okay. Transition state is the top of the hill. <clears throat> yeah, so again, sort of stressing that in this figure. Uh, so that. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh, so if you were told that um, you have an elementary reaction, you can get a rate loss of any of those. So first step, second step, doesn't matter. What we're going to, what's going to be more interesting is what's going to happen in a couple of slides when we want to find the rate law for the overall reaction, combining all of those steps. And that's going to be a little bit more fun. So, as chemists, we propose how reactions occur. We propose a mechanism. And we want to figure out if that is a reasonable mechanism. There's no way to prove that a mechanism is correct, but there are ways to prove that a mechanism is incorrect. Um, and that's by exploring rates and intermediates and things like that. So we are gonna look at uh, mechanisms that are, have two different types, uh, that are two different types, either a slow first step and then fast step subsequently, or a fast step first and then slow steps a slow step after that. So let's say we have a reaction of NO2 gas uh, plus CO plus carbon monoxide forming NO plus CO2. 
And experimentally, it was determined that the rate law is rate equals the rate constant times NO2 squared. One thing you can know for certain now is that because the rate law um, isn't rate equals NO2 times CO, that is not an elementary reaction. Okay? So something else has to be happening. There's a mechanism involved. Uh, otherwise, this would, would be just like what we did on that last slide. If it's an elementary reaction, we use the stoichiometry. We can't do that here, or we weren't able to, uh, because we determined experimentally that wouldn't be correct. So here's a proposed mechanism. We have NO2 plus NO2 reacting to form NO3 plus NO. And I, I don't know how, you know, this is a may, maybe a made-up problem. It might be real. Um, someone would have had to figure out there were these intermediates or products formed. Then we have NO3 plus CO forming NO2 and CO2. And you'll notice that we've written slow step after step one and fast step after step two. So if someone was doing some experiments, they determined that NO2 plus NO2 forming products occurred much more slowly than NO3 plus CO forming products. Okay? Do those two reactions in two different vessels and see how the, they form products. So the question here is, is the rate law consistent with the proposed mechanism? Well, you have to know how to write the mechanism, write the rate law from a mechanism in order to answer that. So for mechanisms with a slow initial step, the rate law is predicted from the slow step. So again, a mechanism is going to be a set of reactions uh, two, three reactions listed very much like this. Step one, step two, step three. Um, <clears throat> for mechanisms with the slow initial step, the rate law is predicted from the slow step. And what that means is that we can use the reactants and their stoichiometric coefficients and predict the rate law as if it were an elementary reaction. So from step one, for this mechanism, we would write rate equals some rate constant K times NO2 times NO2 which is equal to K times NO2 squared, right? Which is what experimentally was predicted. Rate equals K times NO2 squared. So when you have a mechanism with a slow first step, you're like, yes, because I can figure this out easily. I just plug in what it should be for an elementary reaction. So metric coefficients are the orders. Um, and you make sure you use that rate constant, okay? That makes sense? You just get it right from that uh, first step. It's much more challenging when you have a slow second step. So let's, I think that's our next thing here. I'll let you do this one, maybe make a video on that. There's another one I'll make a video on. All right. So here's a very general reaction where we have a fast first step and a slow second step. So A plus A, and notice these arrows. This is, these are equilibrium arrows. Okay. What that's going to say is that we have a rate constant in the forward direction, K1 and a rate constant in the reverse reaction, I wrote k minus 1. k minus 1 for reverse. It's just common to write it that way. I guess you could do kf for forward and kr for reverse. Either way. 
Then we have uh, B plus M forming C plus D. This is also going to have a rate constant associated with it. We'll call it K2. One is nice because it corresponds with step one and things like that. Okay. Let's say we predicted, in this case, the rate law from the slow step. What do we get? Rate equals K times B times M. But there's a problem here. Does anyone recognize this? I don't remember if I even Yeah. There's an intermediate. Yeah. You can't have an intermediate in the rate law. Okay. So that can't be the rate law. So we're going to have to come about the rate law another way. The first thing we're going to do is make an equation that's going to substitute for the concentration of M. And um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to recognize that this first step is in equilibrium. Okay. We've got our rate in the forward direction, rate in the reverse direction, and what did we say? Uh, rates forward and reverse at equilibrium? They're equal. So what we can do is say that rate equals K1 times A squared. That's the elementary, we're, we're assuming elementary reaction for that first step in the forward direction. But we can also say that rate equals k minus 1 times m. So now that's for the reverse reaction. Okay? But because we're in dynamic equilibrium, we can make them equal to each other. So we can say that the rates are the same which means that K1 is equal to a concentration of A, oops, sorry, nope, 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 typo. K1 times A squared is equal to K minus one times M. So again, what I'm doing is I'm saying that these rates are equal to each other, which means these are equal to each other. And I've just set them equal to each other here in the equation. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Given that, we can now solve for M. And so let's do that here. We're going to say that M is equal to, I'm going to divide both sides by k minus 1, k1 over k minus 1 times a <coughs> squared. Now we can take this and plug it into our initially predicted rate from the slow step. Everyone okay with this part? to get to the, to the <coughs> concentration of M. Okay. And just to make things a little bit more clear, um, in this predicted slow step rate law, I'm going to put K2, as I just forgot to put that there last time. So now we're going to plug M into rate equals K2 times B times M. Okay, that's from above. Again, from the predicted rate law from the slow step. And so we're going to end up with rate 
equals k2 times k1 over k minus 1 times a squared times b. And all, we don't need to know all these k's like numerically when we're predicting a rate law. If we multiply all the k's by each other, that's totally fine. We're going to end up with rate equals k, some value k times a squared times b. Sometimes your homework problems will ask you for like what k's are you multiplying together and dividing, all of that. Uh, other times we're just going to look for something like this. Okay, I know we're out of, we have one second basically left. I will make a few more videos, please, about Catalyst. Let me say one more thing about Catalyst. Please read about Catalyst speed up the rate of the reaction in the forward direction and the reverse direction. Both go faster. Why it makes the reaction occur more quickly is that it lowers the activation energy, okay? That's key, lowers the activation energy. All right, have a great uh, weekend. I'll see you.